G'day everyone and welcome back to my art channel Brushes with Beck. In today's video I'm starting a brand new piece. Once again I'm working on pastel mat. This is a piece of dark grey pastel mat and I'm working much bigger than I normally do. I'm working at 50 by 35 centimetres for this one so there is a long process ahead of us but let's get down into it. So I'm starting off in the far left hand corner. I'm using both my Derwent drawing pencils and my Faber-Castell polychromos pencils for this one. Uh, I'm just sort of laying in some really rough base colours here. I wanted to get some colour down on the page because the whole page itself is a little bit overwhelming when I look at the piece as a whole. So I wanted to focus on this one little section where I could lay in some colour before moving on to another area. Now I didn't finish off this little section. This is I think part of the kangaroo's um, back leg. Um, I didn't want to finish it off because I wasn't sure on how defined I wanted the detail to be, whether I wanted to sort of blur this section out a little bit. So I've worked through here and built up the underlayers, but I haven't um, refined this part before I work on the next part that you see me moving on to. Now, because of the scale of this piece, there is a lot of work involved in how much of the paper the um, kangaroo takes up. By the way, if I didn't mention it, I'm actually working on a red kangaroo for this piece. So some fur for a change instead of a bird. I know I draw a lot of birds and I need to practice my fur technique a little bit more. And then that also helps me to share that with you guys. So the size of this piece I've only done once before when I worked on my very first pastel mat piece actually, which was a Crimson Chat on a piece of white pastel matte paper. I will link that up in the cards above so you can see that one. That one was quite a bit different because I didn't fill the whole section of the page. I had a small bird on a branch with some leaves and there was a lot of different things going on but it didn't actually cover a whole lot of the paper whereas this um, picture of the kangaroo actually covers a whole lot more of the paper. So working into this next section here, this is sort of the side of the kangaroo's uh, stomach or chest and I'm just slowly working in some colours from Polychromos to build up some colour in that section and to uh, create base layers and cre create a little bit of colour and depth with brightness and shadows in that area. So I am being really messy with this colour lay down. You really don't have to be very precise when you're working with pastel mat, doing base layers that you're going to cover up with the detail. You can be very loose and very messy. It's really not, um, it's really not that important, I don't find anyway. I can be, just scribble everywhere with my pencil and then blend it out with the cotton bud as you see me doing. And as you go over that with different layers of pencil, you won't even notice. And then if there are some sort of, um, I'll say pencil strokes left in, uh, they will blend into your first stroke. So when I'm scribbling like this, I tend to go roughly in the direction that the fur is going in so that if I do stuff anything up and if anything is quite prominent through my detail work, it's really not obvious because it um, becomes part of the texture of the fur. So I'm working in some colour here and blending that out and then deciding if I need to go in with more colour, laying that in again and blending out again. So it's a little bit of a process but it didn't take me overly long to do and it was a matter of working out what colour tones I wanted to lay in and also how dark I wanted to make some of my shadowed areas. So just you know, working through that, referring back to my reference photo and then you can see me going in with um, brown there. I think that might be Bista from the Polychromos set. And just adding in some slightly, not really detailed, but uh, scribbling in some texture definition of where there's some darker pockets of shadow and then blending that out. And it can help me refer to that later. And once again, with the Polychromos um, color there, which I always forget the name of, um, beige red I'm just highlighting some brighter patches in the fur with that and scribbling those in and that's sort of reference points for my fur texture once I start to add in all that detail. So this is sort of the final blending out of my base layers before I start to add in 
some of that detail. And like I said earlier, I didn't get very far in this piece. Uh, I meant to work on it a lot more today, but I had um, a rather terrifying incident involving a couple of venomous snakes where I nearly got bitten, so that was a bit unfortunate. And um, I'm completely fine. I didn't get uh, didn't get any didn't get bitten, um, but it wrecked my nerves for the whole day. And that basically, draw any drawing today was basically a write off. So I didn't get to finish the detail on this section of fur, but um, you can see me working on that now. So I'm just adding in a little bit more um, of the shadow areas to make that a bit more prominent. And then I'm going in with quite much sharper pencils and using those to do the first strokes, more refined first strokes, laying in some of the darker areas first, because then I can still go over the top of those darker hairs with my lighter colored pencils, because the pastel matte, you can use those brighter colors over the darker ones and you, they will still show through because of the texture of the paper. So you can see I'm using very sharp pencils to get these fine fur strokes. And because of the texture of the kangaroo's fur, I am not just doing straight fur strokes. I'm not holding my pencil completely still as I'm doing those strokes. I'm sort of twisting it a little bit, allowing it to go in sort of waving directions as opposed to a straight direction, just to get some really dense fur texture in there and to really highlight that it's you know, not just smooth, straight fur texture. So making sure I keep those fur strokes nice and short because I do have a habit of making them too long. So that's pretty much it for this video. I'm sorry there's not a lot more to go on for this one, but I do obviously plan on working on it throughout the coming weeks and finishing it up, doing a multi-part video like we did with the uh, whistling duck. But I do hope you've enjoyed this video and that you will continue to stick around my channel for the coming weeks for the remainder of this piece. I'm really looking forward to completing it because there's some really beautiful color tones in this piece. So once again, thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please give it a thumbs up, comment down below, subscribe to my channel, and I'll see you again next week for another one. Stay creative.